The fifth-ranked team in the country, the Tennessee Volunteers, look to continue their mastery over South Carolina. Volunteers have won 10 out of 11 head-to-head, -head, including a couple of blowouts last season. But don't sleep on these Gamecocks picked to finish dead last in the league, currently in a tie for third right now. A win on the road at Rocky Top will go a long way to getting Lamont Paris's team the respect they feel they deserve. Tennessee just a half game behind Alabama for the top team in the league. And with that, we welcome you courtside. Tom Hart alongside Dave Bradshaw. We've got Alyssa Lang in the house as well. Tennessee has a good record. They have a great team. They play elite, elite defense. And Dane, finally, they have a go-to score in a real All-American in Dalton Connect. No question. He's become must-see TV. Not only an SEC Player of the Year candidate, possibly National Player of the Year candidate. And he's at his best against the best, whether it's at home or on the road. Teams have thrown everything at him, yet he continues to perform. Look at these numbers. They are off the charts. He can beat you from three, mid-range, at the rim, getting to the free throw line. He is public enemy number one for South Carolina. On the other side for this Gamecock team, they've gotten great play out of Michi Johnson. He's their leading scorer at nearly 16 a game. That's 10th in the SEC. He was a key for them last week, a week ago tonight. They knocked off number six, Kentucky at home and now they try to replicate it on the road the top 25 voters may not have taken notice of the south carolina team just yet 17 and 3 and 5 and 2 in the league and coming off of a comfortable win saturday against missouri a game in which they never trailed the win before that against arkansas the same kind of dominance this is going to be a physical one tom tennessee likes to get up in you and be physical as do the gamecocks Way on Rocky Top, Tennessee coming off of a 75-62 game against Vanderbilt, trailed by five at the half. Great second half, and it goes straight to the big Jonas Adu, and he's turned around by B.J. Mack. That'll be an interesting matchup to watch. South Carolina under head coach Lamont Paris uses Lamont Cooper, B.J. Johnson in the backcourt. B.J. Mack is really the key to their attack. He's a wide-body five who can shoot the three. Here's Mack trying to work on Adu. Got him off balance, didn't get the whistle. Gamecocks crash the boards. Zachary Davis keeping it alive. We go right back to Mack. Multiple pump fakes and he gets Adu in the air. That's uh, that's a matchup Lamont Paris was looking for today. It, he was, and I, I'm a little surprised, and maybe it's because of transition with Adu on Mack. I think they want Josiah Jordan James on him and put Adu on Murray Boyles, but they get the matchup nevertheless, and really twice that time did Mack do a good job of getting in to Adu on that possession. That time got rewarded with the foul. Gets the first to rattle home. He's coming off of a 21-point performance on Saturday against Missouri. Hit a couple threes in that game. And he's got four 20-point games in the season. Transfer from Wofford. Started his college career in South Florida. Here's a look at the starters for Tennessee. This is a well-rounded starting five that finally has that scoring punch with number three, the transfer from Northern Colorado. Santiago Vespi coming off of a 12-point game. Here's Connect trying to get downhill. They switch with Michi Johnson on. 6-2 defender trying to stay in front. Great defense by Michi Johnson, and he turns it into a fadeaway. That's the shot he can make, but that's the shot the Gamecocks want him to take and rely on in this game. Nothing easy. Connect goes 6-6. Johnson just 6-2. Got teed up on Saturday, thought that was a walk. Here's Mack for three, and he splashed the home. Vescovy took a shot to the face. And they got to look at this and look at Santiago Vescovy. There's not a call made on the court, so at this time it can only be ruled as a flagrant. You can't just add a personal foul. I so thought that was a basketball play there. Her Bulls caught him with the left hand right under the chin. We have to see if any elbows hit above the head and neck area, but it seemed like it was more of the hands on 
that first look. Pat Adams said, we got nothing. And play on. Levescovy sure did go down hard. Aside from the contact there, Tom, I mean, that's Mack with an open three again. I, I don't know that Tennessee wants Adu chasing Mack around the perimeter. He is the three-point threat of the bigs rather than Murray Boyles. Connect. Gets cut off. Here's Vescovy, the lefty. Trying to feed it inside. This is a South Carolina team that plays elite defense. Adu misses on the jump hook. They hold teams to just 65 points a game. Cooper on the run, and that will count. And a goaltending call against Tennessee. And Talon Cooper's got a bucket. A 7-0 South Carolina start. South Carolina wants to do to Tennessee what Tennessee typically does to other opponents, and it leads to a transition bucket here. But that all begins with the physical play down low as, as Tennessee wanted to bury him in the paint. Now that's really 0 for 3 on opportunities down low. Two bunnies for Adu off the mark. Davis for three. Off the front of the rim, chance for Tennessee to push with Connect to the open floor. Connect from the E, in and out. And an imperfect start for the fifth ranked Volunteers, trailing by a touchdown three minutes in. by Vescovy. Vescovy with the ball fake and a kick. Josiah Jordan James for three. Nietzsche Johnson turns the corner. What a start for the South Carolina team. Mack for three. where Tennessee needs to push the pace. South Carolina does not have a lot of tempo. They'll be opportunistic, but if you're Tennessee, this can't stay a half-court game. Connect, finally. Well, you see the half-court defense from South Carolina is just really elite, especially in league play, but second-chance opportunities can't happen before the game comes. Shot clock leads it short. Good transition D by South Carolina off the miss. Connect trying to post up the 6 4 Cooper. To Adu. Back to back buckets for Tennessee. That's part of what makes Adu so problematic for defenses. His ability to hit that mid range shot that can end in short rolls, all types of usage. For the big man. Tennessee started this game 0 for 5. Volunteers have made two of their last three now. Murray Boyles puts it on the floor. Very talented freshman out of Columbia. They can't get it to him. Deflected by Jordan James. Connect took a bump. Feel like we're a short track in Bristol right now. Rubbins racing, and after South Carolina held a 7 0 advantage, Tennessee has fought its way back. Slow start for Tennessee out the gate, but it's now a two-point game. 
from Knoxville. We say good evening to Alyssa Lane. Hey, Tom. When it comes to the South Carolina team, the story, at least for the past 24 hours, has been the fact that they haven't cracked the top 25 rankings. It's something Gamecock Nation's been talking about, and of course, it's something these players have been talking about as well. BJ Mack telling me earlier today, it's something they've talked about. They've gone back and forth in the group chat. He was actually the one standing by waiting to take those rankings, screenshot them, put them into the team group chat yesterday. He said, obviously, he sends it with the message of, we still have work to do. That chip on the shoulder grows even bigger. Obviously, it's a goal of theirs to be ranked, but it's not the ultimate goal. This is a team that wants to make a run to the NCAA tournament. Lamont Paris adding this morning, saying, hey, it's just gasoline on the fire. If it means a bigger chip on these guys' shoulders, I'm OK with that. Well, South Carolina comes in with a net of 49. They've got three quad one wins. This is a team that is three and two in quad one. They are six and two in quad one and two combined. The strength of schedule is probably something that kept the voters from paying much attention, but who would have thought, Dane, after the win against Kentucky a week ago tonight, that would have gotten a little bit more attention, especially the way they shut down that Kentucky offense, top five in the country. What bothers me is I think it's more about the preseason standings not taking them into consideration at all, causing them to have to go above and beyond to prove themselves. Whoa. Wow, what an athlete. That guy can go above and beyond. Connect second bucket, he's got five. But for South Carolina, forget the standings, it's about Selection Sunday. And they're playing good enough basketball to be right there on Selection Sunday and back in the NCAA tournament. You meant rankings, but you mentioned standings, which brings me to this. Sitting right now in a glut of teams that are third as Josh Gray gets his first bucket just on the floor. Is this a South Carolina team at this point of the season that could compete for an SEC championship? I don't think they're there yet. I think they're in that upper tier, upper half of the league, which, again, given the fact the SEC is so strong, would mean an NCAA tournament berth. I don't think they're in that upper tier with the likes of Auburn, Tennessee, Alabama, and Kentucky. Connected the feed inside, and Tennessee not having any luck at the rim. Great interior defense once again. Toby Awaka had made a bucket in the last two plus games. Hooper guarded by Ziegler. This is something Vandy did to the five foot nine inch Sakai Ziegler. Now Studi on the floor. <laughs> Ziegler knocked it away. How about that? Not once but twice did South Carolina try to post up five nine. Did you see a double team come? No. Not whatsoever. Tennessee's like, you can post up five all you want. You're not going to get what you want. I, I think that other coaches, well, I think Rick Barnes specifically, is okay with people trying to post up Ziegler because that means you're going to a player in a place where he's generally uncomfortable asking your guard to score in the block. Yeah, absolutely. And the physicality that Ziegler can bring, it's going to be a tough two. That's what you want as a defense. Tough fadeaway by Jacoby White Wright, who's been shooting the ball well from deep. Ziegler goes bounce and Awaka left it short able to clean it up but man struggles inside early on for UT yeah, I think the quality of shots Tennessee has gotten have been pretty good but just finishing around the rim that time they get bailed out with the offensive rebound which is what Awaka does he has more offensive rebounds on the season now than defense Marcus Ugasuk is also off the bench for South Carolina. This is really their second straight five. And it's rebounded by Awaka. Connect from the logo. And saved by Awaka. What great effort. Ziegler with the feed inside. And Josh Gray, the seven-footer from Brooklyn by way of LSU, will pick up his first person. How about Awaka? This guy, when he's in the game, he gets 21% of the offensive rebounds that are available. If that, compared to the nation's top, if he would qualify with enough minutes and enough boards, 22% leads the country. So this guy is an absolute elite offensive rebound. Awaka gets a breather. J.P. Estrella is on for the first time. 6'11", freshman, Scarborough, Maine. Into the corner, off the baseline, out of bounds. Again, he left it short. Carolina plays with a relatively slow tempo, mainly based on what they do on the defensive end. But now a scoring drought that's lasted over four minutes for South Carolina, thanks to its third turnover of the night.
How about the job Lamont Paris has done? I mean, Tom, when you look back a year ago, five hires in the SEC, I think the media would say he was the fifth splashiest hire. Nobody really knew what to expect. Uh, expect. And then after a difficult first year of building his culture, the turnaround he has done, Dalton Connect might be SEC Player of the Year, but I think you're looking at SEC Coach of the Year right now, late January. He had 32 on Saturday against Vandy on three of seven from three, but also three of seven only from the free throw line. The 32 is his average over the last five games. In fact, 32 points three times over four games hasn't been done very often in the SEC or nationally. The last one to do it nationally was Marcus Howard at Marquette in 2020. The last one to do it in the SEC was guy by the name of Lofton in 2006, and they've got the number five hanging in the rafters here. Well, he had great guys passing the ball. Lofton. <laughs> Three on two. Michi Johnson keeps it, and it's rebounded by Estrella. Yeah, they're high on Estrella. You can see why. I mean, he plays way more mature than a freshman typically does. Good finish, Vescovy. That's all Estrella. Clearing out the lane, creating space. Vescovy opportunistic. First lead of the game for Tennessee. South Carolina led this 7 0. Mack with the rip through. Estrella stops him at the block. Studi back from a shoulder injury. He's got that heavily wrapped, missed three games. Turnaround is off the mark, but another offensive rebound. South Carolina, great offensive rebounding team. There was one key. In Tennessee's film, it was to keep these guys off the offensive glass. Empty possession. Carolina has made just one of its last ten attempts. Beautiful pass. Estrella blew the bunny. What's that now? Four bunnies they've missed down low. One of them with a second chance opportunity. But, man, six points left out there. And Studi makes them pay on the other end. <laughs> Studi giving him 10 and 4. Left shoulder strain in the second half against Georgia on a hook and hold flagrant foul that cost Georgia possession, cost South Carolina three and a half games of Studi. Yeah, Studi's got to get hot for South Carolina to pull off the upset on the road. I mean, he's a guy that's capable of making four or five triples in this game and could be the difference. Mack shares it into the corner. Ugasa leaves it short. There they are again. Mack again. Carolina not having a great shooting night. Just two for eight from deep. On the other side, Tennessee has made one of seven three-point attempts. Screen from Estrella. Vescovy is so good in traffic. Shot clock's at six. Mack knocked it away. Vescovy lets it fly. With three on the clock. Well, not the prettiest play you've ever seen out of Tennessee, but it was productive. Great job by Estrella just hanging on to that ball and finding a shooter. Our third lead change of the night. Studi's a transfer from Vanderbilt. He's a D.C. native. Big addition to South Carolina in the offseason. Another corner three and another miss. Man, they're getting clean looks. Just well, can't knock them down. Yeah, their three-point shooting is what had them really off to such a hot start this year. Then they went cold. They found their stroke, but not tonight. Hey, a layup made. It's Estrella. Tennessee's bigs are just so good on that pick and roll, especially in the middle of the court. Trying to break down Estrella and got a hand check. That's his first. Rick Barnes, second to John Calipari, active wins. Winning percentage, five straight NCAA appearances. 25 wins or more in four consecutive seasons. You say this is his best chance to take Tennessee to what would be its first ever Final Four. They check just about every box. They've got veterans. They've got a healthy point guard. 
They've got their culture established, and they've got superstar in Dalton Connect. I mean, that's what's prevented them from advancing in the past is a go-to score. They certainly have it. But the reason this is a well-oiled machine for Dalton to connect to walk into is for what Rick Barnes has built, thanks to guys like Vescovy, Josiah Jordan-James, Jemai Meshack, who was key in that recruiting of Dalton Connect. Tom, all he did on his visit was play one-on-one, -on -one, like a bunch <laughs> of kids just in the backyard. That's when they knew they both loved ball and said, hey, this guy's going to fit in just right. As Cooper with his second bucket, ends another long South Carolina drought. Ganey from Connect. Jones, or James, excuse me, with the rebound. Connect another shot. And couldn't see what direction the possession arrow, uh, what direction that call went from Pat Adams. We may have a foul on that. Talk with Lamont Paris about it. 16-15. Lamont Paris walking him through it. Well, South Carolina knocked off six-ranked Kentucky at home. They had a court storming a week ago tonight. They're 17-3. That, well, that wasn't just a win. That was, in the second half, fait accompli. They had taken care of all business. It was um, it was a fun court storming, but it was almost like it was after all the action had already been decided. Michi Johnson has been their leading, leading scorer, and that was their highest-ranked win since 2010. How would you summarize South Carolina's season thus far and what's possible for them? Yeah, they're extremely solid. Uh, they've got great point guard play, and Talon Cooper has been a most – Probably the most underrated transfer pickup in the SEC. What he's done at the point guard position, just 23 turnovers on the year, uh, it's just phenomenal. And they've got shooters. We talked about how they went a little bit cold to start SEC play, but they've been shooting near 40% since then. And, of course, Mac on the interior. So are, do they excel at any one category? Maybe not. But, man, are they connected as a team? Everybody understands their role. And when you say bought in, uh, this team I, it certainly has done that. A balance from Dalton Connect, 6-6-2-13. Hard to get him yeah. to a place where he's still not comfortable. And that's the type of play that Lamont Paris is. That's where you just tip your cap and say, good shot. We hope you have to take those all game long. And if you beat us that way, you beat us. Cooper transferred in from Minnesota. Before that, played at Moorhead State. He's an upstate native out of Roebuck, South Carolina. They get it in to the freshman. Callum Murray boils, and he'll be going to the free throw line. And that's one if you're Dalton Connect, you, you want to make the lefty turn back to the opposite shoulder there. And he let Murray Boyles get to that strong hand. Callum Murray Boyles played at AC Flora High School there in Columbia before headed out to Utah to play at the Wasatch Academy. He's been in the starting lineup now for the last five games. Didn't make his first start into Missouri back in mid-January. Talking with Lamont Paris, he said, listen, this dude was our best player throughout the fall in the preseason, but he got sick with Mata. He missed the first six games. Lamont still pleading his case. And it took him a while to get back up to speed. They're still waiting to, for him to get all of his explosiveness back. It's kind of a scary thought, right, that he could continue yeah. to improve. Yeah, really physical guy. If you didn't. Look at the roster and see freshman next to his name. You'd think he was a junior. I mean, I, I think he plays unafraid of any of the SEC competition. We saw that against Kentucky. Connect through three Gamecocks and Gray with the rebound. Back to Lamont Paris. He told us her goal for guarding Connect wasn't to try to take away everything he could do. That's impossible. He said, but rather stay in front of the ball, make some of his shots difficult, don't get caught on the side, and allow him to get to the rim. Yeah, stay between him and the basket and make him shoot over you, and that's exactly what they did right there. He can make those again. They want him to take those if you have to pick your poison. That's a second on Jonas Adu, who's already had to sit for a chunk of the first half, and it looks like he'll be headed back to the bench with Toby Awaka taking his spot. Well, they do have great depth at the five spot, but Jonas Adu, if this was a year ago, you'd say, okay, no big deal. He's got two fouls. But this is a guy playing like an all-SEC player. When you talk best big men in the SEC, you're talking Tolu Smith, Janai Broom, and Jonas Adu has inserted himself into that conversation. Johnson with the dish, extra pass to Gray for the bucket. Well, Gray has just gotten better at first catching the ball, keeping it high, no dribbles, 
and being efficient at the rim. That's his role for this team. Seven footer gives him a couple buckets a game. Here's Connect off the screens. Connect has been held to seven points on seven shots. Best to be on the seven footer. Good ball movement, but it's knocked away, and South Carolina with the takeaway. You see how late in the clock Tennessee was. Even against Kentucky, South Carolina held Kentucky. They had 14 possessions that went to the shot clock 10 seconds or less against a high-paced team. That's how South Carolina controls tempo, got rewarded with the transition bucket as well. You know, speaking of the great defense against Kentucky, the Cats only had three shot clock violations all season going into that game. A bump from Murray Boyles on James. And that's the first on the freshman. But really an interesting conversation with Lamont Paris. And you, you brought this up, Tom. He said, you know, describe the tempo. What Are you guys trying to slow it down? What, what are you trying to do here? You're 348 in Kempom and adjusted tempo. He said, look, really it all comes from our defense. Our defense is so solid that we make teams go late in the shot clock. Thus, there's less possessions in a game. And we're not going to force it. We're not going to force anything that's not there offensively. Vescovy. Well, that's a, a look that he used to take. Yeah. Ziegler around the screen. Connect once again got just a half step, but rare non finish. It's a good example of how he gets great leverage. Well, and a good example of the missed opportunities at the rim, too, for Tennessee. It was Don Connect was just named the Woodward Board late season top 20 list. He was a player of the year in college basketball. So, congrats to him. That just came out. Good timing. Davis from the corner. And Murray Boyles the board back up. And Boyles has a couple of buckets here early on. Took advantage of the mismatch there and just buried Ziegler down low on the offensive putback. Side Jordan James against his home state school. has shot the ball really well against him throughout his career. Connect down the lane and with the left. Lamont Parrish yelling at Zachary Davis, who's such a good defender, but when he gambles and gets out of position, that's when he gets exposed. Richie Johnson going to the scores table. Cooper. Nope. Rebounded by James. And a power move by Awaka for the bucket to put Tennessee back in front. Two ties and five lead changes. They're on their feet now in Knoxville. <laughs> Jacoby Wright, shot like a two. Pull up long, two pointer. And Vescovy got mixed up with Gray. The loose ball ends up with Carolina and a bucket from Talon Cooper. It was Colin Murray Boyles and I believe Boyles and Vescovy got tied up there near hook and hold. Vescovy no. This is a physical matchup tonight. In low scoring, which I think South Carolina wants. It's not that they're incapable of scoring at a high level, but I think this is what you want if you want to pull off an upset on the road. Carolina averages 73 points a game, second last in the SEC. They really get it done with defense. Double on Murray Boyle, shot clock late, got it off, got it in! Cooper with a look to the student section. Talon Cooper's in double figures already, and South Carolina leads by four. Yeah, can't leave that guy open. Terrific find by the big man with Cooper, who's over 40% on the year from three. Connect with the answer on the curl. Well, and here's what's frustrating if you're Lamont Paris. Connects had trouble getting clean looks. When you gave up that back door, not only was it a back door layup, but you allowed him to get a clean look, get a little bit of rhythm, and now he gets a second one, starting to feel it. South Carolina takes a timeout, 2.35 to go in the first half. Cox using the clock and taking advantage. Cooper's got two threes early on. South Carolina's knocked down four of them. Under Rick Barnes, a bunch of great seeds for Tennessee over the years. You think they could be a one seed this year? Uh, I think so. The way they've been playing right now, 
Dalton Connect has been phenomenal, as we know. They've got the leadership at point guard. Some of the veterans with Vescovy and Josiah Jordan James that got to see the ball going through the hoop a little bit more, a little bit more often. But you see the consistency here. Uh, you talk about a fan base uh, that's certainly appreciative of what Rick Barnes has been able to do to most fan bases just want a shot at March Madness to have it with this quality of a seating each year. But what this fan base wants in this program is the final four that has never occurred in program history. And this certainly looks like a squad that can do it. It only helps the higher seed you get. It's credit to Rick Barnes for scheduling so tough. Strength of schedule will never be a knock on Tennessee's resume. Now they got a couple of wins in the non-conference. It seemed to gain value each and every week. That Wisconsin win looks sensational. Illinois had some inconsistency, but that's also a good-looking win. Here's Connect, a little skip, and off balance off the side of the backboard. Didn't get the whistle. Here's Carolina the other way. Five on four. Connect had to end up all the way in the corner on Mack, and now they switch to Michi Johnson. We think to Dari's point in studio, they can play slow, but they want to play fast. And that first half against Vanderbilt, Vanderbilt set the tempo. Second half, Tennessee got it out and going. Even on opponent's makes, they advanced the ball up the court. But South Carolina is just so good in their transition. It's hard to get that tempo going in your favor. It's a Tennessee team that in conference play has been held to just the sixth highest tempo. Now they're the number one offensive efficiency team in the league in conference play. They're number two in effective field goal percentage. They're number one in two-point field goal percentage in conference games. Michi Johnson picks up his second. That's lucky it's coming so late in the half. He's going to try to finish the half with 139 to play and stay out of trouble. Connect on Cooper. He's got incredible length, and that certainly helps. He really likes that spot. He is extremely comfortable shooting over the defender right at that SEC logo. Three ties, six lead changes in the first half. James is just suffocating Mack. Now he switches on the right. Mack got the feet over. Connect and is able to cash in. They're switching one through five, and South Carolina doesn't mind. Mack has been extremely patient down low with those pump fakes. You have to stay down if you're Tennessee. Make him shoot over the top. Power move. will walk it. Another missed shot in the paint. It's off of Cooper and will stay with Tennessee. I really thought Tennessee had a big advantage in this game on the interior with, with Adu, Awaka, but South Carolina has more than held its own. Mack with seven, Murray Boyles with four, and Adu sitting on the bench with those two fouls. It's a Tennessee team tonight that is just 6 for 12 at the rim. That is 50% if my public school math is correct. You'd like to be higher than 70% that close. And a turnover. Mack may have gotten injured on it. And he's slow to his feet. 10 second difference in the game clock and the shot clock. Mack trudges down eventually. Shot clock now at 15. for three and they track down another rebound only four second chance points off of all these offensive rebounds James gambled clock is at five Mack puts it on the floor and he gets a trip to the free throw line with 2.4 remaining in the half well, Mack just puts his shoulder down and I'm not sure Awaka could have done any more than that principal verticality jumping straight up. Did they get Awaka or Mayshack? I thought it was Awaka. Yeah, it's Awaka on the, you know, his trusted you know, scoring. But that's a tough one to a big man for Tennessee. And so one more for Mack, who picks South Carolina over. Florida, Alabama, Arkansas, LSU, Iowa. He was first team all conference. Southern Conference all tournament team with Wofford last year. Between he and Cooper, they have changed the identity of this South Carolina offense. Knocks them both down. 
2.4 left. See what Tennessee has drawn up to go 94 feet. You probably want to get the ball in the hands of Dalton Connect, don't you? <laughs> He's been their offense. 13 of their 26, Dalton Connect. So, I mean, hey, he can make it from anywhere. Just got to find a way to hit him on the run. All right, so what do you draw up if you're inbounding from 94 feet with only 2.4 left? Do you want to pass to midcourt, or do you think you can go farther? I, I don't think you can throw a Hail Mary type pass, because if it gets intercepted, that's too much time left for the opponent to take a couple dribbles, get a shot off of their own. So I'm trying to hit Dalton Connect on the run somewhere on this side of half court. Um, where they're inbounding the ball, maybe around the NBA three-point line, give them a couple dribbles. About the same clock a week ago at Georgia, LSU with 2.3 left in regulation, threw it all the way into the far corner on a perfect pass and had a clean look at what would have been a game-winning three. They'll get Johnson off the floor. He had two, has two fouls. They don't want to put him in harm's way. How about this lineup on the far side? High formation. Here's connected to the front of the line to James to midcourt before the buzzer. Good luck. But South Carolina has held Tennessee to just 26 points on 36% shooting, holding the Volunteers to two for 11 from three. Lamont Paris in his Gamecocks trying to capture some national attention for the second Tuesday in a row after beating number six Kentucky last week. So the Gamecocks will head to the locker room with the lead, but first, he's with the listen. Coach, what have you been emphasizing to your team as far as their offensive play right now? Yeah, um, just be aggressive. I think we got to attack. They're a really good defensive team, and they're man-to-man. -man. They put a lot of pressure on you. I think the way to alleviate the pressure, sometimes you're going to have to attack under control. We've been able to do that some, uh, and I think we've done a good job defensively in the first half, too. How would you evaluate the way your guys have defended Dalton Connect so far? Done a pretty good job. We let him get loose on one layup in transition. That was a big part of what we said we didn't want to do. But for the most part, the points that he's gotten, he's earned. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. They are 1-0 in that particular quarter zip. Try to stay undefeated with the black with the block C. And Carolina with a four-point lead on the road at Rocky Top. We get set for the second half as South Carolina looks for its first road win against a top five team since March of 1997 when they won on the road at then number three Kentucky. Tom Hart alongside Dane Bradshaw. South Carolina has done a lot of things right starting on the defensive end tonight. Yeah, South Carolina's been really good defensively. The one guy they still didn't have an answer for, Dalton Connect. I mean, who can stop number three for Tennessee? This guy has been so good for Tennessee. And you'll see it right here. Even as South Carolina tried to make it tough on him, he was able to get to his spot, finish through contact at the rim, goes off one foot, two foot, you name it, that sweet pull-up mid-range jumper that he's just gotten so confident with. However, the slow and steady South Carolina Gamecocks, led by the veteran point guard, Talon Cooper, who is their identity offensively, he just keeps the pace at a favorable tempo for South Carolina and is deadly from beyond the arc. And they have held Tennessee to just 26 points and a four-point lead. 17 times this season, Carolina has held its opponent under 30 points and a half, the most in the SEC. For more on what Rick Barnes is thinking, here's Alyssa. I asked Coach Barnes what the emphasis was at halftime. He said, well, rebounding, the way we started this game, just about every guy we depend on wasn't pulling down rebounds. We're doing some switching. That's not what this team does. He said, we basically need to get back to our identity with a much more physical start to this half. All right, Alyssa, thanks. Let's take a look at the halftime stats. Every detail counts. Brought to you by Pfizer. A lot of numbers there. What uh, jumps out at you? Well, it's outside of the stat sheet. As, as Alyssa said, the switching has bothered Tennessee. But Lamont Paris told us before the game, hey, we think there's opportunities for us to force a switch and then take advantage of that matchup. And so they've been able to really expose Tennessee at times. Tennessee, the the court. Tennessee has been a great second half team this season, especially when trailing. When they trailed at the half, they've scored 50 points in the second. It's a team that averages just under 80 points a game. Murray Boyles gives it back. Here's Michi Johnson showing some range. He grew up in LeBron's shadow. His dad and LeBron, great high school players at the same time in both uh, Cleveland and Akron, respectively. 
And LeBron's going to take note of this one if South Carolina can pull up the upset for the second straight Tuesday. Connect with the feed. Adu only played seven minutes in the first half due to foul trouble. Back on the floor to start the second. They got good looks with that middle ball screen with Connect and Adu and a much better start for Tennessee finishing around the basket. Denied by Vescovy, and he wins the sprint to the rim. Blue right by Johnson. Here's Michi Johnson downhill. Too strong. James the rebound. Connect. Got stopped by Murray Boyles. Best to be looking for an assist. Multiple misses at the rim for UT again. Cooper the rebound. Tennessee is 8 for 16 on layups. I'm trying to post up the freshman Murray Boyles on James. A little off balance, He's playing for the whistle. Ziegler pushes a pass midcourt. Here's Vescovy for three. Got it! Tennessee has fought back to tie it up. South Carolina one for three to start the second half. And a foul on a push-up inside. Josiah Jordan James gets whistled for his first. Well, it's turnovers and quick shots for South Carolina that's allowed Tennessee to get into this rhythm. And credit Vescovy, the reliable veteran who got them going defensively to start this half with the pick six type play all the way to the basket. And then that time hunts his shot in transition. South Carolina just got to slow down on this end of the court. Uncharacteristic turnovers and quick bad shots. That has, is not the recipe for the control tempo that they want. Vescovy got caught with the hold. Rick Barnes got teed up last week, and he's not too happy with Pat Adams and his crew so far tonight. The Reverend can't get a technical. <laughs> you can't call heck on somebody with the nickname Red. Another one on Tennessee. This. If nothing else, it's the second on James. South Carolina is going to be happy if this turns into a free throw shooting contest. But boy, that could really stick it in the mud and slow down the tempo. Getting them on some hand checks here. This time it's James. Uh, We've seen a lot more contact in this game than that. Let's get a little piece of the arm, but typically a play on. Rick Barnes pulled uh, pulled off something I hadn't seen before in a game against Vandy the other day. He was talking to one official face to face and got a technical from a guy 60 feet away. That's. <laughs> I didn't know he could throw his voice like that. Johnson for three. That was in and out. Connect with the rebound. Tennessee with a 7 nothing run. Here's best to be to James for three. James shooting over 50% from three in his career against his home state team. He's from Charleston out of Porter Gouge School in his fifth year here. Another whistle. This will be best to be second. This is a very physical matchup, as we said on the outset. South Carolina busts through screens similarly to Tennessee. They don't do a ton of switching South Carolina, and Tennessee will do it at times, but they're a physical team. They're not letting them play nearly as much as they did in the first half. Yep, that's for sure. Here's Mack powering inside. Took a lap before dropping. Here's Ziegler, still hasn't scored in this game, and leaves one short at the rim, under 50% in the paint for Tennessee. 
Back out to Mack for three. They're much different offense when B.J. Mack can hit threes, and he makes a third of them on the season. Really opens the floor for South Carolina, and it's guards to drive. Connect will drive. In the Mack, and will go to the line. Connect is just so good at turning that corner, getting into the paint. And he's great at jumping off of one foot, going at the rim, but just the presence to know, hey, I'm going to go off two, jump into the defender, initiate this contact, and get to the line. And I, I don't know for sure this is what he's thinking, but when you have several calls in a row go against you, that is a great time to drive the ball because typically you're going to get the next whistle in your favor. So I'm going to go ahead and play him for a better move. There you go. 80% from the free throw line. Dalton Connect was born in Fargo, ended up in Colorado. High school ball there, the Northeastern Junior College before heading to Northern Colorado. He was on everybody's wish list in the offseason. Is it has turned into the most valuable transfer in college basketball this season. I love what Jermon Mayshak's mother posted on social media recently about his recruiting visit. She said, Jermai called her and said, Mom, we're going to get him. This guy doesn't care about going out. He doesn't care about shoes. All he cares about is ball. He's one of us. He was in the gym at 10 o'clock last night getting shots up. Our fifth tie of this game. We've had six lead changes. Into the corner for three is short. Look who's there, Gray, and he got fouled by Adu, which is Adu's third. And Rick Barnes, with five fouls against his team already this half, is going to have to manage the roster the rest of the way. Unless he got him on the body. It looked like a lot of ball there for Adu, one of the best shot blockers in the SEC. But the problem for Tennessee is too many second chance opportunities. And right now, South Carolina. Just doing what they do, making the game ugly, sloppy, and hanging right in there with the best in the SEC. This game is deadlocked at 35 apiece. The correction on the last foul was not the third on Adu. Instead, it was the second on Connect. Yeah, Adu got all ball, but it's Connect on the arm there for with Gray. And so maybe some good news for Tennessee is you don't want Adu going to the bench with his third. Statistical oddities in this game. Tennessee has only attempted two free throws. Volunteers didn't shoot a single free throw in the first half. You don't see a lot of turnovers either, Tom. That's another thing South Carolina does extremely well. They only turn it over 10 times a game. They only turn you over 10 times a game. They're just solid. For them, a turnover is just a forced, tough shot. So. That doesn't allow the defense, we saw it against Kentucky, to get anything going in transition. Josh Gray knocks down the first. I feel like Gray, when he can put points on the board, it's just icing for South Carolina. He averages two and a half a game. He's got six so far tonight. Just another guy that plays his role, makes the most of his minutes. And you see him there hedging a screen, getting back to his man. He does a lot of the little things, does 33. Talking with Lamont Paris, just, I really feel like as a team, Larry Boyles thought that he was straight up. He said, as a team, we play better together maybe than anybody in the league or that he's seen so far. Do you agree with that assessment? Yeah, he, he said, look, I'm not saying we're a better team than anybody on the country, but if you just rated the country's teams in terms of playing connected together, we got to be right up there. And, uh, I think everybody understands their roles. He says that they're very self-aware. They know their strengths and weaknesses and not an insecure team. And I think that's why you see them so comfortable in what they do. Top five teams have only lost to an unranked opponent once this season. That was way back on November 6th to open the season. Fourth-ranked Michigan State lost to James Madison. Duke also lost at home as a top five team to Arizona. And since then, Fifth-ranked teams have won 44 consecutive home games. Well, and South Carolina is going to be in position to win this game at the end if Tennessee can't finish on that end. I mean, that's not going to go down as a missed shot. 
But by all means, that was a missed two opportunity and an and one for Adu. They've got to get better play from their post. Jacoby Wright ran into a wall. Cooper for three. And Gray on the glass for Carolina. Here's Cooper. And he stepped on the sideline. And a South Carolina turnover up one five minutes into the second half. Cooper gets a breather. Michi Johnson back on the floor. Murray Boyles takes a seat. Ugasuk replaces him. What? This is Tennessee team went on a 7 0 run early this half. Three for seven this half. Where can they improve their efficiency in the half court? Well, it's got to be with more tempo. They got it going because of the transition and getting some turnovers and making South Carolina be one and done. But South Carolina's getting multiple opportunities on the other end of the court. Vescovy with the cut, another miss at the rim. I can't remember seeing a Tennessee team miss that many bunnies. And it's not just been one guy. We've seen Ziegler this half go in there. Vescovy. Johnson probes, pulls it back out. Screen from Studi. Michi Johnson, the leading scorer for South Carolina, former Ohio State player. Gray split his teammates and threw it away. They caught in between. Yeah. Tom, here's a big thing for Tennessee. Outside of Dalton Connect, this is an offense that can lose confidence. We're accustomed to saying that about their three-point shots. But right now, they're losing confidence inside the paint. They've got to show their veteran presence and go on to the next play. And right now, this looks like a team that hadn't played together very long. <laughs> That's not the case. Fourth turnover for Tennessee. They're totally discombobulated. Credit South Carolina. We said the same thing about Kentucky a week ago tonight. One of the nation's top offenses, Tennessee, comes into this one top 20 in efficiency. Kentucky was number two in the nation in scoring that night. And South Carolina absolutely took the wheels off. Tennessee is a team that averages eight steals a game. That helps power their offense. Only three so far tonight. Studi buries it from the corner. His second triple. And South Carolina leads by four. Credit Michi Johnson. That was an absolute blow by. They want to make him get in the paint, make him be a passer, but he delivered a dime to a shooter. Ziegler working on Gray. Got a push from behind by Jacoby Wright. And that would put Zakai Ziegler at the free throw line. Michi Johnson, known as a three point shooter, so you have to press up on him, make him a driver. So what he does is blow by one of the best defenders in the SEC, cause rotations, which is hard to do against this Tennessee defense. And there's Miles Studi coming back from that injury now with his second triple. Ziegler 74% at the free throw line. That's his first point of the night. Is, is that a problem for Tennessee? Does Ziegler need to be a scorer for them to win games? I, I don't think so. I, I think it's fine if he's got eight points and five assists at the end of the game. But more importantly, he, he's just got to control things on the offensive end, make sure they get good shots. And the best looks they've gotten, despite not finishing them, have been right there in the middle of the court. That was more ball screen action that got him to the rim. Thanks to Jeremy Mills, Tennessee currently 42% at the rim. The Vols entered the game shooting 60% at the rim. That is a huge fall off tonight. Right around the corner. Mack, he is a load, and he walked with it. A better job by Awaka, not biting on that pump fake and staying solid. Mack loves to bury that shoulder, and he will just pump fake you to death. You have to stay disciplined. That time, started moving his pivot foot a little bit too much there. Switched him. Good call. Took that left off the floor at the end. Ball in connects hand. He's got 15. Here's that middle ball screen that they've gotten good looks with. Connect downhill. A lock to the rebound, and he's going to the line. And so what that does, Tom, once there's a switch on that, even if you miss as Dalton Connect, now you got a guard trying to box out a walk -up. An advantage Tennessee even on a missed shot. Foul trouble for Carolina's star player. That's the third. Charge to Michi Johnson. 
Toby Owaka hadn't made a bucket in two games. He's got two field goals and now another free throw coming in this one. Johnson getting a chat from Lamont Paris, and the message might be, hey, you're too valuable to us to be committing silly fouls. A little bit of full court pressure by Tennessee, if nothing else. Just try to get this game going in your favor a little bit more from a tempo standpoint. Tennessee has it led since it was 22-21. Gamecocks scored the first seven points in this contest. Studi again for three. Got it again. What a weapon he is when healthy. And Dalton Connect on the cover there. You've got to stay attached to a shooter. Connect draws the blocking charge. We talked a lot about the block charge rule. It's gone the way of Long's drugstore, but it's an area where Dalton Connect can really take advantage of the new emphasis. That's where you see guys jumping off of one foot in the lane that they ordinarily wouldn't have done a year ago. But going back on D, Dalton Connect, you got to stay connected to Miles Studi on that. Meshack did his job, cut him off. Here's a walk up. Helping out on Ziegler, who fires the three. Way short. Mack hedges all the way at midcourt. Connect into the lane. Blocked by Mack, and you got the foul. It's the third on South Carolina's big man, and it will put Dalton Connect at the free throw line when we return. Kane, which is four seconds on the shot clock. South Carolina trying to deserve, uh, deliver the third top five upset in college basketball on the road this season. South Carolina with a four point lead on the road against Tennessee. Take us. In your mind, you see Dalton Connecticut tended to by Chad Newman. What's Rick Barnes thinking, and what's the message in the Tennessee huddle right now? Well, I think offensively, they continue to get that middle ball screen action. Now, it's a different type look with a walk, and sometimes not as efficient because he doesn't have the mid-range jumper and passing ability as they do does on that short roll. But it's still been working for him. On the defensive end, Hey, trust the scouting report. If you're on a shooter, trail the shooter. And when you force a miss, collect the rebound and make South Carolina be one and done. And I think that's where Tennessee must lock in. Quit worrying about the fact that it's tough to score on South Carolina and make sure it's tough for them to score on you. Alyssa, what would you hear in the huddle? Yeah, guys, just keep an eye on Dalton Connect out there. Watching him in the huddle, looks like he's dealing with a little bit of a cut on his left hand. He spent most of that last huddle getting tended to by the Tennessee staff, so just something to keep your eye out on. Yeah, head athletic trainer Chad Newman. Were you able to hear anything in the Tennessee huddle, Alyssa? They're liking the tempo more, obviously, in this half so far versus the first half. An emphasis on continuing to play together, look for the next best pass rather than the first good shot. But Rick Barnes definitely seems to be happier with the pace in which his team is playing right now, guys. Connected the free throw line, two for two. Look, a few points at the line in the Vandy game on Saturday. That was one of two games in which Tennessee has trailed at the half and come back to win. Illinois was the other. As good as South Carolina's defense is, I mean, South Carolina, uh, Tennessee's been off at the rim. They've been off from three, just three of 14. And now seven of 10 from the line. So they're just going to have to grind this one out. And their offense is going to open up the more stops they can get defensively. Lugasuk went to the ground. Defense by Ganey to stay in front of him. And now Tennessee trying to show some traps. They've been a team that will gamble on some steals in half court under Rick Barnes. Open three after the ball fake. It goes again. This is Jacoby Wright with his first of the night. Carolina leading by six. Connect. Can't answer. Rebound Studi. 11-20 to play in South Carolina. Up six. Lukasuk with the drive. Tennessee has missed its last six field goal attempts. Meanwhile, Carolina is starting to heat up before that miss by Mack. It's 
Duty. It's off of his man, and they get it to James on the baseline. James size advantage, lost his footing. Connect lost the basketball. South Carolina to push. Cooper in the open floor pulls up. And they'll run a little bit of clock here. You good with that decision? Yes, anything Cooper does, I'm good with. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's one of the smartest players in the country. Fourth best in assist to turnover ratio. He's outstanding. Fourth active player with career assist coming in, 689 of them. Shot clock's at four. Right, fade away. Couldn't find the rim. Connect looked a little tired in that Vanderbilt game. Not sure if he's getting all that energy back here tonight. James, the lefty, to his right. It's a good shot for James. He's very comfortable with a contested mid-range pull-up, and he's got to be more aggressive. It can't just be watching Connect try to take this game over. He saved Tennessee enough offensively. The supporting cast must step up on that end of the court. That's the first bucket of the night for James. Back for three. In and out. And a foul on the rebound will go against Tennessee, much of the chagrin of Josiah Jordan James. He picks up his third. That is the fifth team foul on Tennessee. Pardon me, that's the sixth team foul. Just another example where as soon as Tennessee gets one to go on one end of the court, they come down on this end. They force a missed shot, but then unable to just finish that defensive possession. Carolina only five for 15 this half, but four of their five makes have been from deep. Greyhounded by James, and they're going to get Adu for the reach in. Boy, I can see the frustration by Adu there. Maybe he wrapped him on the side, but. From our angle right here, which is opposite of the baseline official with that deflection. So Talon Cooper to the free throw line. At a dormant high school, Roebuck, South Carolina, consecutive state championships towards the end of his high school career before he went to Moorhead State. I'll tell you what, Cooper did great job there, though, as Tennessee loves to ball pressure you. Cooper has not been rattled. He meets his passes. He holds off to the defender. And oftentimes that results in a better whistle. And Cooper's a very physical guard for South Carolina. Carolina going to shoot nine and a half minutes worth of free throws before this night is over. The text JC Holdway asked him to save her table for a little bit later. Here's Connect off balance. It looked like he wanted to pass initially. Left his feet and eventually put up an off balance shot. Yeah, good call. It looked like his eyes were on the roller and then switched to the rim with that hang time. She lost Vescovy. He turns into a switch. I don't think they wanted this. James in foul trouble. Cooper thought that was a walk, but he lost it on his way there. And now Connect, open floor, lost it. It'll stay with Tennessee. There's a lot of frustration in this building right now, not just the whistles, but the non-whistles. Well, and it's because early in this half, the officials established, hey, no hand checks. Any slap on the wrist is going to get called. Rick Barnes in this crowd felt like there was a couple points of contact on that possession. This is where Tennessee's really good at getting open threes in the corner for connect. And then they also have counters off of that. Into the corner for Ganey. Tennessee just three of 16 from three. They came into this game shooting 34% from deep. Johnson with a crossover on Vescovy. He shares it to Gray. Went up strong and got rejected. And then James with the reach in pulls it away. And we got jump ball. That's James was going to lose his mind if he would have been whistled <laughs> for a foul on yeah. that one. And Adu, such a terrific shot blocker. And Zero and White has not had his best game so far. But like I said early in the first half, his recent play has him in the conversation of top big men in the SEC. And right now, he needs to step up and play like it for Tennessee on this end of the court and really be more aggressive as they look for him on some of these short rolls. A bump out front will put Connect at the free 
throw line. It's the first on Zach Davis. It's a seventh South Carolina team foul. And even that right there shows Adu's presence on the pick and roll. They're, they're so concerned about a switch there or a quick roll by Adu because he's a threat as a 15-foot shooter or a passer and can roll all the way to the rim. It's, it's Tennessee's best action tonight has been connect, and they do right there at the top of the key. South Carolina's defense has been the headliner in this game. Connect 42 points a game over his last five, a point away from 17. And he earns a bonus. South Carolina has won three straight games by holding its opponents 18 points under their season scoring average. Tennessee entered the day averaging 79 and a half. They did it against six uh, against Arkansas, allowed 64, only allowed 62 to Kentucky, and 64 to Missouri. That was 10 under Mizzou's average. It was 30 points under Kentucky's season average. And the big way they're doing that is they win the three-point line. They allow less than six made threes a game. So they do not allow you to beat them from three. Richie Johnson lost his dribble. Gray bails him out. Hader's got to be careful. South Carolina will run its offense with 10 on the shot clock. Hard screen up top that goes against Davis. That is his second. Well, as everybody talks about Vescovy's role on this team being different offensively, that's what he brings to the table. Physicality, great defense, and unafraid to bust through screens. This is a big-time play to draw the offensive foul and get Tennessee a much-needed stop. Moments ago, we saw Santiago Vescovi pick up the foul on the illegal screen. He knows where the camera is. And he's a same guy but different player within the Volunteers' plans this year. I think it's a false narrative when people say, hey, what's up with Vescovi and his shooting? You look at a year ago versus now, his percentages are right there. The difference is he was taking 10 field goals a game a year ago and now six field goals this year. And that obviously the, the factor of Dalton Connect but you talk to this Tennessee coaching staff, and they want him to get back up to that 9, 10 field goal attempts. They think he's turning down too many shots. But you saw it right there, the impact he has on their defense when he picked up that illegal pick. But this is a guy that's extremely valuable between him, James, and Ziegler. That's what's allowed Dalton Connect to enter right into a well-oiled machine for Tennessee. They've been rusty tonight. Only 44 points. Their season low is 60. That came the loss to Kansas and Maui. That's a great read there by Josh Gray. That looked like an easy, clean dunk for Adu and the quick reaction on the deflection by Gray. Volunteers won for their last nine. Adu mid-range. Nothing. But South Carolina didn't allow that corner three for Connect. Cooper fought over the top of that screen. That's where Connect's been getting many open threes on that baseline out of bounds. Murray Boyles picks up his dribble. Gray bustling on Adu. That a little bit tougher. Adu found it. They got fouled by Murray Boyles. If I were to have a criticism of Tennessee tonight as, as a team, it's the fighting language when things haven't gone their way. And I totally understand the frustration when you think the whistles are against you. But for the fifth-ranked team in the country, poise is going to be so important, whether that's going on the road to Rupp Saturday night, the rest of the season, or in the NCAA tournament. Uh, even Lamont Paris for South Carolina a week ago talked about he needed his team to start having an offensive swagger. That, that's how you win big games. And right now, Tennessee's confidence is so low on this end of the court that they've lost that swagger. You can kind of see that, as you mentioned, with just some body language and waiting for somebody to ignite them just to get a few buckets in a row, get this crowd into it. Big time crowd here, over 20,000, but we hadn't heard them much because of the lack of rhythm in this game. Confidence, you would think, wouldn't be a huge issue for a team with four 1,000-point scores, one of only 15 in the country with that kind of resume as a whole. Tennessee hasn't led since the 426 mark of the first half. 
Reggie Johnson gets another touch. Told me this is a team play with a lot of confidence. They knew they're going to beat Kentucky last Tuesday, just like they did on the road at Rupp last year. He's off with his deep three. The other thing Lamont Paris said, a key for them was to slow down Tennessee's transition. Transition, he said, simple, just get back. Done a good job of that tonight. Yeah, they are so good that even after missed shots. Mack got his hand on the lob and knocked it away. Five on four. They did it against Kentucky, too. The turnovers, bad shots, it doesn't matter. They find a way to get back. Nietzsche Johnson has missed his last couple. Nietzsche Johnson's coming off of a game where he went 0 for 9. But look at that. Usually a missed corner three like that, almost an air ball, results in a leak out. And Tennessee's coming down the court seeing five bodies. Connect, no. Rebound, Johnson. Tennessee's got three guys back. Dalton Connect, six for 17 in this one. Johnson on basketball. Ganey just slipped. Vescovy over Cooper. Finds nothing. Tennessee three for 17 from three. They look fatigued, don't they? They do. Body language is not good. The energy seems low. South Carolina can smell a top five road upset. Did that one go off the glass? It went in for Talon Cooper. And South Carolina back on track with that three. Miles stood. He giving him some love. I saw what you did with that jump shot. It started with a Michi Johnson drive and a kick into the corner for three. Carolina with the lead with five to play. If you have the promo. Let's take a look at our player spotlight brought to you by Continental Tire. Well, South Carolina wanted to make it tough on Dalton Connect. I thought he got in a pretty good rhythm in the first half, but man, has it been tough to come by in the second. Six of 17, and that's about what Lamont Paris said. He said, look, we want guys, if they're going to get 20 on us, make them take 20 shots to get it. And that's about the pace that they've had for Dalton Connect right now. And when we mentioned fatigue, Dalton Connect has really been carrying this team offensively here recently, and it just looks like he, he doesn't have the same Pep in a step attacking the rim. Some of that South Carolina, some of it's just the wear and tear of the SEC grind, but it, it can't just be watch three and white take over the game if Tennessee's going to come back. They're going to have to have some of the role players step up and make some shots from the perimeter. Of note, this has been a Tennessee heavy series. Last year, two blowout wins against Lamont Paris's team by a total of 83 points. The Volunteers have won 10 of the last 11 in this one in five straight. South Carolina looking to put an end to that big orange dominance. Connects. Toe. No. You're right. I mean, South Carolina got embarrassed not once but twice against this Tennessee team. And if that's not indicative of the quick turnaround by Lamont Paris, I don't know what is. And here they are in the Food City Center trying to shock the world for the second time in a week. Carolina hasn't picked up a road win against a top five opponent since March 2nd of 1977. B.J. Mackey went four for 12 in that one, but hit 13 free throws. They beat Ron Mercer, Scott Padgett, Jamal LaGlore, and Cameron Mills and that Rick Pitino team that was third in the country. And they did it on the road at Rupp. I think if South Carolina is going to Put this game away in the last few minutes. Mac's going to have to make one of those. They are getting really good looks for their pick and pop big man, who is roughly uh, right at 33% on the year, but just one of eight from deep. So Ziegler to the free throw line. Seventy four percent on the season. Tonight, two for three. Ziegler has not made a shot from the floor, 0 for 5. So my Mayshack hasn't played a ton tonight. He's back on for Tennessee. Ziegler goes 1 for 2. 
This kind of feels like the Kentucky game, doesn't it? Like South Carolina's lead is not huge, but it's comfortable enough that the threat just hasn't been there in the second half. I do think Tennessee more established defensively right now than Kentucky, and that can allow them to come back late in this game if they can get these consecutive stops and somehow convert on the offensive end. Mack trying to find some space, and he powers his way in. And you, you got to love the mismatch. Take advantage if you're South Carolina. They realize Tennessee goes fall, small with James at the five, and what do they do? Say, so get it down the post, big boy. That's B.J. Mack, 6'8", 260, coming at you. 53-46, South Carolina with the lead over Tennessee. The Volunteers not only undefeated at home this season, but they have had a really good run even going back to last year. Meanwhile, South Carolina looking for its second top 10 win in the last three games. Mont Paris lamented the fact that they weren't in the top 25 rankings yeah. before. Well, that'll change after this one. Yeah, they, they've got to close this game out, which they've been really good at finishing games as South Carolina. And nobody respects them, and they don't care. They just take their show on the road. Alyssa, what'd you learn? I can tell you this is a very frustrated Tennessee huddle right now. Before Rick Barnes came over, Jemai Meshack actually took his whiteboard and started drawing up plays for his teammates, specifically trying to make sure they could limit South Carolina from the three-point line moving forward. This is a Carolina team that's made nine three-pointers so far in this half. Coach Lamont Paris has talked about it. You guys have talked about it so far tonight. When this team starts shooting and shooting well, they get that swagger. Tennessee really looking to limit those explosives defensively right now. The surprise in this, Alyssa, isn't just the results so far, but the recent history. Tennessee has won its last five conference games against South Carolina, each by at least 20 points. That's the longest streak in the SEC since Kentucky won eight straight against Georgia by 20 plus from 1950 to 1957. When you're turning around a program, it's wins like this could be for South Carolina that just add to that rebuild to say we are over the hump here and we are over as they did against Kentucky and now a chance to be over the hump against the team that's dominated them in recent history, as you mentioned. Connect missed them both. South Carolina has tied its largest lead up seven. This is how they started the game with a seven-point lead. Mismatch for Mack. Work on Mayshack. And he got the foul on the floor. And Rick Barnes says, what's he supposed to do? He's Barkley and my guy back down to the block. Well, they better get used to it. He's going to Barkley him with no five-man in this lineup for Tennessee. They've got James at the five trying to go small, see if they can't disrupt South Carolina. But hey, that, that's easy money for Mack right now in the post. Mack perfect at the free throw line tonight. He'd come in shooting 50% from deep over his previous three. Nothing going Rick Barnes' way. And just one for eight from deep. Per Ken Palm, I have not seen this lineup in this season for Tennessee. And we'll see if they can get it going offensively. This is where they should have the advantage. Ziegler faked the pass and banked the party. Connect faked the pass and banked it in. He's got another 20 point game. 20 of Tennessee's 48. Ganey harassing Michi Johnson. Trying to clean it up. Impacts will be a little bit late in getting into their half court set. Chuck like a 10. James with the steal and the save. Heads up play to bounce it off of Studi. 10th turnover. For South Carolina. Great ball pressure by James and Lamont Paris furious saying, guys, there's no reason to turn over. Just throw it into Mac, let him back down, and see if we can get it back to the free throw line. Connect. Got another. Back to back buckets. The third leading score in the league. The building coming alive. Meshack. That is straight bully ball, and they get Meshack again. How is that taught in the modern college game in terms of how to defend that? Yeah, if I'm Meshack, you force the catch out on the three point line. And right now, the officials allow 
the offensive player to feel the defender out. But you can't just displace. So if I'm Mayshack, I'm taking that first bump, and then that second one, I'm selling it to the ref. The other option is you can arm bar You can defend your spot as a defender. It's just really hard when you're outweighed 270 to 201. No double team was coming. They bluffed at it a little bit, but I think you got to try to force the official to blow the whistle there on displacement. First miss from the line for B.J. Mack tonight. Connect took over the last two possessions. Don't expect him to pass it on this one. Got it again. And we got a whistle in a Tennessee timeout with 1.43 to play. The Volunteers have closed to four on three consecutive Dalton Connect buckets. Well, they're giving up some things defensively with this small lineup, but they're gaining some things offensively. And Dalton Connect is getting the matchup he wants. So smart there by Connect, knowing he's had success at the rim. Tempted to shoot that three, but realize, hey, there's a lot of time left in this game. Let me get to the rack where I've had success the past two trips. Remember the opportunity that was in front of a bad South Carolina team last year? That was a home win against number one Alabama. Brandon Miller just took that game over at the end. I talked to Michi Johnson about it today. He said, listen, two things. Dalton Connect is not Brandon Miller. Number two, I never got a chance to guard him because I was in foul trouble. This is a guy who can be what Brandon Miller was in terms of just give me the ball and let me go cook. That's exactly what Tennessee has done. I, I still feel like other guys are going to have to make some shots, and Tennessee's going to make a comeback here. But their best offense is certainly with the ball in Connect's hands. Tennessee has won 26 of 31 head-to-head -head with South Carolina since the 07-08 season. It's the third best mark by an SEC team against an opponent in that span. Here's the offense for defense substitution. Rick Barnes has seen enough of back taking advantage of Tennessee in the post. In comes Adu for the defensive possession. Adu playing with three fouls. They are loud now, 140 to play in Knoxville. Carolina shot only 30% in the second half, but five of the seven makes have been from deep. Versus Adu, big on big, lean on lean. Mack gets deep, got it blocked. Adu redirects, Connect got a hand on it. Shot clock at three. Cooper with the drive. Tennessee the rebound, one ten to play down four. Don't Connect going to work. Hangs and Harn will go to the line with 107 left. Exhausted Dalton Connect hits the deck. Is this guy a warrior or what? There is no back down in Dalton Connect after a great defensive possession. Adu stays ready for his opportunity. Has not been his best game, but his number was called late for a defensive stop. He delivered. And then the rare transition opportunity for Tennessee. Couldn't have worked out more perfect. Get the stop, get to the free throw line, be able to set your defense after this. He is a once-in-a-decade type player for a program, if you're lucky. The past 20 years, Chris Lofton, Grant Williams, Dalton Connect has his name in that category. Cooper with the rebound. Under a minute to play, Carolina leading by three. James on right. Here's the screen from Mack. Mismatch. Nothing doing there. Michi Johnson with six. Johnson into the paint. A kick for three. Cooper got it to rattle home. South Carolina 39 seconds away from its second top ten win in its last three games. And its first top five road win since 1997. Tennessee has been bluffing off of this drive. Michi Johnson with the perfect kick. And Cooper, cool, calm, collected, cash money from the corner. South Carolina with eight makes on 26 attempts in the second half. That is not ideal, but six of them have been threes, and they've knocked down seven free throws. That's the story of their offense in the second half. Here's the 
Recap on the game, Tennessee has the ball. Possession arrow, though, belongs to South Carolina with both teams in the bonus. You need a quick hitter here if you're Tennessee, preferably a three. You don't have to have it, but boy, am I drawing up my best play for a three, trying to make this a one possession game. Got to give a ton of credit. Michi Johnson on that drive, the team's best scorer, one of eight. Tennessee wanted to see, hey, can this guy be a distributor? That's not his strength. He's had six assists, including some of those key drives and kicks to the corner. Matt Adams telling us that they have uh, cleaned up the clock. It's reset to 40.2 after a couple of seconds ticked off. How about Talon Cooper's two highest score games this season have come against top 10 opponents. Season high 20 against Kentucky last week. 17 tonight on the road against fifth ranked Tennessee. You had the court storm in Columbia last Tuesday. And as brilliant as that was for South Carolina, this would be even more impressive to take the show on the road, be a, beat a top five team in Tennessee if they can close this out. A couple stops away. Connect guarded by Cooper on the right wing. Running off the screen, the Iverson cut. Gets a look for three. Got it! 28 for Connect. Three-point game with 31 seconds left. That is the sixth consecutive 25-point game for Connect, the longest in the SEC since shouting Devin Downey had eight in 2009-10. Well, we asked for their best quick hitter three play, and you called it off that Iverson cut, gets his feet set. We talked about being fatigued. you got to be in amazing condition and shape to dominate on the offensive end late in the game the way Dalton Connect has. Will it be enough? I don't know, but just a valiant effort by three and white. Last power five player with power six, excuse me, with six straight 25 point games with Marcus Howard in 2020. Connect has taken over this game. Is it enough for Tennessee? Down three, 31 seconds left. This is a South Carolina team with a ton of point guard experience. They've got three guys on the court, and Cooper, Wright, and Johnson that all have experience as primary ball handlers. They rarely turn it over and solid from the free throw line, and they'll have to be to pull off the huge upset on the road here in the last 31 seconds. Don't forget, battle in the Magnolia State, Mississippi State, and Ole Miss coming up next. Still some drama left on Rocky Top. Full court pressure, Ziegler near steal. Now a trap in the corner. Johnson shares it. Wright holding it in the backcourt, pushes it to Studi. And a quick foul from Josiah Jordan James. Stops the clock with 23 ticks. You saw those three point guards handle the trap and pressure of Tennessee, which is not easy to do. And here's Miles Studi coming off of that injury. 63% on the year from the strike. for some clarification from Pat Adams on the opposite end. Want to make sure, I guess want to make sure they have the right shooter. Uh, or one and one versus two. It seemed like they were holding up two fingers, making sure everybody knew he had a chance for two here. First attempt from Studi tonight to make it a two possession lead. A shush to the student section over there. He's in double figures. And another. The South Carolina team carries swagger, and they do it on the road on Rocky Top. The lead is five. Connect has scored the last ten for Tennessee. Here he is coming back to Ziegler. Ziegler had nowhere to go. Fired the three. Rebound tipped all the way to the backcourt. Ten seconds left. Five-point deficit for Tennessee. South Carolina is probably going to escape this one. Wow, oh, connects is not quite yet. Buries the three. And it came with the lean. It's a two-point game with 5.1.
Tennessee was dead in the water with the ball in the backcourt. Down five with two uh, with ten seconds to go. You're not kidding. This game was over. And Dalton Connect raises up with a leaner three to give Tennessee a little bit of hope here and put pressure back on South Carolina, likely from the free throw stripe coming up here. But wow, a broken play. Connect hustles the loose ball down, dribbles up the court, keep his team alive. 31 points. It may be academic, but they're double checking that he was behind the line. Here's the look. It was well behind the line when he took off. All right, so what's the plan for South Carolina here? 5.3 left. You're nursing a two point lead. I think similar setup as before. Have one of your better passers take the ball out of bounds. And that's where they had that three point guard type lineup breaking the press down there. You don't want to send too many bodies down there, make it congested, keep the bigs out of the picture and let your guards handle the pressure there. And again, if you catch it, don't panic. Tennessee is gonna have to foul you. They don't have enough time to waste to wait for you to try to pass and get a steal. Just gotta complete this first pass. All 10 in the front court. Ganey is playing center field or free safety, if you will. And now they switch with Adu. We'll put him back in midcourt. Meiji Johnson to inbound it. All the way to midcourt. Studi will wait and draw the foul. The collision with 4.3 left. A little more congested up there than I would have preferred, but Studi had the mismatch deep with Adu covering him. And Great veteran play of running to the ball. Studi made it a two possession game last time he was at the free throw line. He can do the same here. Two free throws coming for the transfer from Vanderbilt. First game back. Suffering a shoulder injury three and a half games ago against Georgia. And he does not get rattled. This to make it a four point lead. At Arkansas, dub. Kentucky, dub. Missouri, dub. At Tennessee, Woo. would this be a statement victory? And he extends the lead to four, 4.3 left. Well, Paris saying, get back. The only thing South Carolina can do to get in their own way would be to foul a three point shooter now. It'll be Connect, who has taken over late. He'll weave his way through some game talks. It's in and out, and South Carolina with its second top 10 win in a week. At home against Kentucky last Tuesday, and now they take down number five Tennessee on Rocky Top. What a win and a statement for Lamont Paris and this South Carolina team. Tom, at the top of the broadcast, you asked me, is South Carolina in that upper tier to win the SEC title? I said, I don't think they're up there with Tennessee, Alabama, Auburn. Boy, they're sitting there saying, hey, why not us? If you don't respect them now, you never will. And they don't care. They are out to prove a point. Outstanding convincing road victory by South Carolina. That road win was at Rupp in 1997 against an elite Rick Patino coach Kentucky team. Time now for our mayhem moment brought to you by Allstate. South Carolina all smiles post game. And for good reason. Two huge ones down the stretch. Cooper, Murray Boyles, and Cooper from the corner. Clutch plays, clutch stops, clutch free throws. What a team. What an effort. South Carolina with the road win. Lamont Paris said, we're looking for something to build our brand. Boy, did they.